All right, let's talk homemade tools. So um, we're gonna make some tools, uh, common tools. Let's start with the first thing that you pulled out of your bag, which was the fishing line. So the fishing lines can be really useful for what we call um, a clay cutter. A common tool is it has a couple of handles and it usually has some kind of a string wire in there. If you don't have this or you lose your little piece, you could use dental floss, piece of string or a wire. Um, and typically the wire is attached kind of like a T. You see the T shape? So it's attached like a T perpendicular to the wire. We'll do our best to do that, but it's not that important. So here's how we're gonna make ours. Get your fishing line and take two of your paper clips. Two paper clips and a fishing line will create this um, tool. So all we gotta do is tie your fishing line onto the paper clip. I'm gonna tie it, if you don't fancy that, do it. I'm just gonna tie it just like I would start my shoe if I was tying my shoe. So just kind of one under the other and then pull. And I'm gonna do that twice. So I wanna tie what we what I would call um, like a double knot. Nothing too fancy, although it is a little tricky because of the, it's so small. So take your time, feed it all around and through. And like I said, um, any kind of string will work as long as it's not a thin thread, um, a stronger string or um, a piece of dental floss works really well. If you end up losing or breaking this little fishing line, that's a good replacement. Part of the reason this is difficult is because um, I don't wanna leave, I don't wanna use too much extra because if you leave too much extra on the end, then you won't have much in the middle, okay? So I want you to um, attach this to both paper clips. I'm only gonna do one. And then we will be using that. You can pull through like this, or you can slide it so that it's more perpendicular, like I showed you, the T, and then that would be a great tool for cutting clay. So that's your clay cutter. The next thing we're gonna work on are, we're gonna use these popsicle sticks. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to let you know that your, your skewer that you got, that's your pin tool. So a very common um, tool in ceramics is a pin tool, and this little skewer is gonna be our replacement, and this will just be for fun to figure out what you can use that for. It might become useful. So we have a pin tool now, and we have a clay cutter. Um, the popsicle sticks, let's just start with one of them. Uh, some common tools in ceramics are wood carving tools. I call this an undercutting tool. It's a really big one, but there's all different sizes of them. Um, I just got a big one to show you, and I like it. We use it on the wheel a lot, and it has a bit of a curved end. You can see that's pretty cool. And um, some of these come in all different shapes, sizes, curves. They're good for carving, scooping, and even creating texture in clay. So this one's really cool because imagine poking it, right? And it would create a cool texture. So um, we're gonna mimic some of that with just a popsicle stick. These are soft enough wood. You should just be able to use a pair of scissors. And all I'm gonna do is cut this at an angle. So I'm gonna try to make this tool here with the angle. And I'm just gonna pick an angle and cut at it slowly. And you could try to sand this, but you don't have to. It's actually really soft. It's not dangerous or anything. So this might be really good for carving in places, maybe creating edges. And I think we'll leave the other side round just like this one's round and pointed. And so now we've got our two, our homemade and our um, other tool that are like a wood undercutting or just a carving tool, I would, I would think of it that way. If you want to experiment with another popsicle stick, you could look online, there's lots of tutorials. Um, you could experiment doing a different angle or trying to maybe create a texturizer. What I find is that when you try to cut um, across or into it. Sometimes it's a little difficult, but go ahead and experiment. You're going to have an extra one of those if you want. So now I've got a wood undercutting tool as well as my pin tool and the cutter, the clay cutter. Um, okay, the other uh, popsicle stick, I'm looking at my list here, so I'm going through the list of what we got. Um, the other popsicle stick that we're going to, tool that we're going to make, we need another um uh, paper clip with. Okay, so paper clip and a popsicle stick. Let me show you what those are going to become. 
a really common tool in ceramics, another one, <laughs> there's lots, is, and by the way, I don't need any of these, but we're going to do it because it's fun. These are called ribbon tools or loop tools. Um, I prefer to call the ribbon tool, this is a ribbon tool, it's basically a wire, and it's not, doesn't have any edges, it's just a wire. It's great for scooping, loop tool, loop scoop, loop scoop. These ribbon tools, these are actually, if you look, they're kind of um, have an edge to it and they're a little sharper. These are really nice carving tools. We're not gonna be able to quite get the sharp edge at home, but I do want you to realize the difference between the ribbon and the loop. One's just a wire and the other's kind of a flattened edged piece of metal. So um, we're gonna do our best to mimic these. Notice they come in lots of shapes and sizes. So square, round, kind of elongated, our usual forms. You can get really nice, uh, these nice, more narrow, small ones get carved lines really well. Um, the other ones that carve lines well are ones that have more of a point like that. And there's even smaller ones, right? So all of these are ribbon or loop tools. So let's make one of those. We're going to use, you could use a pencil instead of a popsicle stick, but we're going to try to attach it to a popsicle stick. It's about the right size, if you notice. So you have an option. If you don't have any um, wire cutters or anything like that at home, you could just try to affix this straight onto your popsicle stick. And I'm going to suggest that you use a strong tape. The clear tape I gave you would probably work. Masking tape would work great. Electrical tape, um, even duct tape would all work. So if you don't have a way to cut the paper clip, then all you need to do is put it on there. I'm putting it so that the double loop part is down and I'm going to tape it really tight, you guys. You're gonna wanna really be pulling this through the clay and so it's important that it's secured very tightly. So get that first piece of tape wrapped really well and then continue to wrap around. Doesn't mean you need a whole bunch of tape, it just means it has to be on there really well. And then I'd probably put a little bit more down here, okay? So this is mimicking our loop tool. They look pretty good, right? Okay, now, um, if you do have a, a wire cutter available, um, and maybe you could even use scissors, it would be cool to try to create maybe a square, this is a square one, or an angular one, because those are really cool for um, carving lines. So here's what I would suggest is, I'll do it down here so you can see, you're going to take your, um, your paper clip and kind of open it up. And then what I would do is see if you can, so think about this is what we're putting it on, right? So if I want a little angular one, I might be able to use this as one angle and then I need to bend it closer like here. So what I would do is open it up and then from there you can start to um, bend and create. I'm just doing it with my fingers right now and create something that has more of a corner to it, right? More of an angle. And this was the original bend of the paper clip. I'm actually, I think I'm going to, I'm going to bend it even more. I don't want it quite that round. All right. So the part where the, um, the clipper, the wire cutters come in handy is you have all this excess, right? Now, if you don't have wire cutters at home and you still want to try this kind, you certainly, I'm going to bend this even more, you certainly could just, you just have that wire kind of hanging down the stick and I would just tape all the way to make sure it doesn't, you know, snag you or um, grab your skin or anything like that. So I'm trying to create kind of an angled one, you can see that there, and then I would put it, attach it here. So if you don't have a wire cutter, you could probably just try to attach it with tape and then just tape all this to it. I'm gonna use a wire cutter to clip off some of the extra. So I'll clip this here. And 
And my wire cutters must be old. They're not working. So definitely scissors won't work. Sometimes you gotta wiggle. <laughs> Safety goggles. Just kidding. I didn't provide those. Okay, so then all I'm gonna do is kind of wiggle this and squeeze it as much as I can. And then I'm gonna tape it on. Tape it on like this. Okay, so I'll take my tape. And you just, you never know what shape you're gonna use or like until you start to try it. So I would make a couple I would make at least a double-ended tool like this with two different shapes. And then if that's all you can make because you only have two paper clips left, right? Um, if you can only make the double-ended, that's fine. If you were able to cut and trim and maybe you have an extra piece of wire, I would suggest trying to make even more. Look at this really tiny one. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be similar to this little guy. So what I would do is if I have the extra wire and the extra popsicle sticks, I would make a few. And then that way while you start working with clay, you're gonna be able to choose what works for you. And sometimes you'll use all of them and sometimes you'll find that you have a favorite. Okay, so that's how we make our loop tools or ribbon tools, they're commonly called. Um, I just kind of prefer to keep them separate loop for scoop ribbon is more for carving ribbon has an edge and a loop has a um it has just a wire okay so loop tools those are done um oh by the way if you're uh if you're wiggling it and you're like man this thing's not very secure it would help if you have it it would help to put a touch of uh we all have the white glue we should probably put a touch of white glue and then tape it up and then it will help hold it even more all right, so we've got those done. And then um, one more thing I wanna teach you how to make real quick is, this is a really great, often my kids' favorite tools. These are their favorites. They're a soft rubber tip tool and they're different shapes and sizes and they're great for smoothing. I call them smoother tools, right? They're good for smoothing clay. Well, these are super expensive, $8 a piece almost. And so we're gonna make our own with our pencil. So here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna to try to get up close so you can see. Um, there's different, okay, some are just angled like that. And then some come to a chisel. This is called a chisel because it's angled on both sides. Whereas this one's only angled on the one. So you can choose either one, but I would choose either the chisel or the, the one side. I think a chisel works great for the eraser. Here's what I'm gonna do. Just, you're gonna have to really go for it. Put your scissor, the blade of your scissor, you want it to sit halfway in the middle of the eraser. So I'm gonna put it, it's hard for me to do antsy. Put it halfway in the middle of the eraser, and then I'm gonna just snip. And you can see, I kind of cut it on an angle. See that? It's not gonna be as chiseled. And then I'm gonna come on the other side and do the same thing. It'll happen fast, right? And then you can go back and you can, don't take too much off, but you can go back and you can try to clean it up a little bit so that you get a bit of a chiseled edge. That chisel is gonna help you get in places and smooth it pretty well. And um, I think uh, that's a good idea to try to create a little bit of a chiseled rubber tip tool, just like this one with your pencil eraser. The pencil needs nothing. This is perfect. I even sharpened it for you because this is a great carving tool. It's my favorite carving tool and I much prefer it to a pin tool, okay? And then the very last tool, you need to have one of these. It's an old gift card I found or some kind of heavier plastic paper won't last, but it would work. Um, a very common tool is called a rib. These ribs are typically kind of kidney shaped. Some people call them kidneys. Um, and so there's they come in uh, metal, rubber, wood. I forgot to bring those to show you, but the ones I like are these flexible metal ones. 
perfect. We just need to cut it a different shape. So we're gonna draw with my marker. I've got one right here. We're gonna draw with our marker. You don't have anything to trace, right? You don't have anything to trace at home. But you can kind of do this um, just by creating a little bit of a curve. So as even as you can, just make a little curve. I would draw it first. Oops. Maybe you're doing it better than me. Maybe not. And then we're going to kind of curve out the bottom edge too. So it's going to look kind of like the top of a mushroom. So sort of the top of like a mushroom cap. Okay. And then all I want to do is cut that out with scissors. Should cut pretty easily. And honestly, it doesn't matter exactly the shape. You could even leave it just like the card. I would just want to get rid of some of the corners at the bottom. So I've got this now. This is going to be great for smoothing clay out. All right, could be any kind of shape. Um, mine isn't quite the same as a as a rib, but I think it's gonna work just fine. And I might even use it this direction, right? So we put our hand on it, we curve it, and that's a smoothing tool called a rib, a rib. All right, I think that's everything that we got. So you now have a carving tool, a chisel, you have a, a rib. I hope you uh, have a couple of ribbon tools. You're going to have your wire cutter and your homemade pin tool as well as a wood um, carving or undercutting tool. So this is now, um, these are now our new best friends and um, you can use any extra materials that you have to create other fun tools um, at home on your own. And I encourage you to look up on the internet, watch some videos because a lot of people are making them and they might have a great idea that excites you and you should do it.